Hi everybody, just a quick video today about uh, wireless workbench TV channel gotcha that can get you. <laughs> um, if you don't know anything about wireless workbench or are new to wireless workbench by sure, um, I have a lot more videos that kind of go into more detail about how the program works and why we use it. Um, just check out soundnerdsunite.org or just Google that or Google my name, Nicholas Radina, and you'll find a bunch of stuff on YouTube and all over the place. Um, but today I want to deal with um, kind of how Wireless Workbench handles TV channels and how to understand what that even means in the first place. So as a refresher in basic terms, Wireless Workbench allows you to enter in inventory, hardware units, ask it for, I need whatever, 30 frequencies and let the computer do its math, which is what it does best and coordinates frequencies for you based on data. So what we're looking at here in this window is the RF spectrum that we need to worry about or that we work within. You see down here, there's something that says TV and these little squares. And these squares denote a six megahertz chunk. T digital TV channels take up six megahertz. That's what this TV channel corresponds with. Always remember that the DTV channel indicator doesn't always mean the channel in the city, like the public name for the channel. So sometimes they might say it's, you know, we're channel five, but their digital TV channel might be channel seven in real life. So what we're looking at here is the spectrum. And this was in Charleston, South Carolina. And in this venue, it really was a super quiet and an easy day for RF in general. But you'll notice these, all these big uh, columns here, these mountains. This is a dead giveaway that this is a TV channel. It corresponds exactly with six megahertz. Now, you also see this red column here. And if you go over here to your right, this, this uh, box on your right basically gives you all the parameters of this window. One of them is TV channels. So when I take that off, you see there's the red goes away. You put that back in, the red's there. Um, and if I click on additional exclusions, it'll turn blue. So what we're looking at here is this red line here, down here, is called the exclusion threshold, and it's default set at negative 85 dBm. What that is, is it is a threshold of what you are telling the computer, the software that's doing the math, that anything above that line is trouble. <laughs> Meaning it is a picked up, it is, it is uh, RF energy that's above that, that line that we should not coordinate a frequency over. Now that could be something that is picked up in a scan that is just a little spike of something and it, and it will tell the program, hang on, we're not gonna um, coordinate something on that specific spike. Um, same thing for TV channels. So this six megahertz chunk here, yeah, it's a TV channel. And it's also, because it's above the line there, an exclusion. So that's what that means over there. I'm going to take that off for now. So we're going to go over here and just look at TV channels. I'm going to really quickly delete this and show you. So what happens here is you put in a zip code, and I'm going to do this acting like I've never done it before. Enter in the zip code of where I am search and it's default set to 50 miles radius here just leave it where it is so it's going to tell you um, it's going to search its offline database for the tv channels that are registered in that area and it says it found seven tv channels so you look down here and you see you know channel 24 um, that's six megahertz 530 to 536 it's you know what it's the call sign is the type of channel how far it is away from your zip code and this is what kind of trips people up sometimes, this offline DB. This does not mean the station is offline. It means the source of the data is from an offline database. The rapidly changing RF environment in our world with digital TV channels and the FCC selling off more and then um, cell towers firing up, it's hard to keep this data accurate. And I don't know exactly how sure does it, but I, I'm pretty sure that within updates, um, they might be revising this database. But it's not in real time. You know, it's not it's not querying an online database that is 100% accurate. But it gives you a great idea. 
But the thing is, is that if you don't have scan data here, like if I took this away and we have nothing to work with, all we have to work with is TV channels. So let's assume we have no scans and the TV channel. Now, if I put the scan data back in, look over here, channel 19. Remember, the red bar, red column, corresponds with TV channels that were searched when you searched this. And you look at channel 19 and it's not checked. Doesn't think it's a TV channel, but we know it is because we're looking at it. That's definitely a TV channel. So what I usually do just quickly is just go in and I say, okay, well, yeah, that's a TV channel. I don't want the software to think that it can put something there. And just as an example, if I, I'm just gonna unlock all this stuff. If I went ahead and did a calculation um, because everything's above above the line here, it's not going to put anything over it because it thinks it's an exclusion. It knows it's an exclusion. But sometimes, th depending on the signal strength, maybe the very bottom of this might dip down below um, the exclusion line. And it'll try to coordinate a frequency on that because it won't think it's an exclusion anymore. So we, we definitely want the, the program to say this entire chunk, for sure, do not coordinate anything on top of it and take it into your, your math. So what I do is I just go in and add it myself. Clicking on it, saving it, and there's a red bar, which denotes a TV channel. And of course, it'll also be a exclusion too. So one way to tackle this beast sometimes when you don't have accurate scan data I use um, this website from the FCC, which is a quick way to get more information about TV channels in your area. It's not zip code based, it's city based, but um, it is, gives you some more information. So I'm gonna, where are we? Charleston. <laughs> um, you can leave everything, everything here pretty default. I put uh, lower channel 14 because I don't need to know anything below that. And I do short list, oops, short list. And depending on the hotel wireless here, we'll see how fast this is. <laughs> so what we're going to get is a list of TV channels that have their paperwork in, <laughs> that are licensed stations that um, maybe may not even have a station yet or may not even have a tower yet, or maybe they've applied for a construction permit to build one or they're a license to be transmitting. Lots of things are happening within this landscape right now. What you're looking at is you're looking at the call sign and the TV channel, just like we had in uh, Wireless Workbench. Um, but it'll give you a bit more information as far as the, um, the power of the station. Um, the main thing we're concerned with here is stations that are higher power. But if you see here, we've got channel 17, channel 18, channel 19, mm, channel 20, channel 20, and then channel 24. We go back into wireless workbench. We look at their um, search, and you know, 17, 18, 19 initially didn't show up, or channel 20 didn't show up. The landscape here, just our scan, we know that the scan didn't pick up anything at 17, 18, or 20. Chances are that's because these stations are just so low power. 17 and 18 are just so low power um, or they're or they're possibly offline that they're not even showing up in our scan you'll see a lot of the like the 15 kilo kilowatt um, stations and things and unless you're like right on top of it right next to it chances are it's not going to show up in your scan but channel 19 for sure is a high power station that looks like a regular channel here in uh, Charleston and there it is so that gives you a quick little reference of what's happening in the area and the power um, of that station. So if you didn't have scan data, I would go in here and just double check these stations and make sure that Wireless Workbench didn't miss something. Um, so I'm gonna go back to TV channels and add my channel 19 back in. So we know we have it. So that's just a quick thing to uh, think about when you're coordinating. And, and the main thing I try to stress a lot is Use your common sense when you're looking at this window here. Know what you're looking at. 
you don't don't just blindly let the, the software 100 percent do what it does sometimes recalculating a couple times might put stuff where you would rather have it um, i'll do a later video on using uh, inclusion groups and ways to kind of force stuff to go where the, where you want them to go um, but one quick thing about uh, rf explorer and it's uh, the difference in scans made from an RF Explorer and a hardware unit. So what you see here is an Axiant scan and this Axiant unit was a full bandwidth 14 to 36 or 470 to 608 or so. Um, I think I also did a UR4D scan, which I think might be that one, and then a QLX scan. And if you look at all those scans and you look at Zoom in a bit more. This is one TV channel here, channel 24. And we know that a TV channel is six megahertz, and that's what that re represents. You see, TV channels have to transmit exactly, have a hard cutoff around their, their region of, of transmission. And all of these hardware units show that very accurately. And that's based on um, a very well-designed front end of the RF portion of your receiver. Now if I introduce an RF Explorer scan, I'm just going to take off all those. Now we see this happen. So you see how, I'm going to take exclusion off. This is a TV channel and now look at this slope. It's like a, it's like a shelf almost. And when I put the exclusion back in, it's telling me that this you know, that's another maybe one megahertz on each side of that, that the software thinks and accurately does should not coordinate there. And that's simply because the front end filtering of the very affordable <laughs> RF Explorer is just not as good as um, the hardware unit. So here's a very easy way to see that. Um, that is a, that's an Axion scan or a hardware unit scan and then put the RF Explorer in and see that. So I think the RF Explorer is great and it's it's a great, very affordable way to get scan data when you don't have it and gives you a great representation of what the environment is like. But if you are up against the wall and you're trying to coordinate a lot of frequencies, you need that one megahertz there that it thinks is an exclusion. You need that little part there. Um, and when you, when you use an RF Explorer, it just doesn't have the same front-end filtering that a hardware unit has. So that's just a quick tip. I hope that helps you. Um, always remember, if you guys have any more questions, it's always easy to reach out to me um, or check out Sound Nerds Unite. I got some more information about kind of the tools I use for um, solving wireless problems and also lots of uh, articles and gear stuff and fun things and some videos. Hope that's helpful, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.